It's Reaper update time again. Let's look at what's new in Reaper 5.979. There's actually a lot of cool stuff in this update. We're going to start off with a new thing in the action list, global scope for key bindings in the main action section. And this means that actions can be triggered regardless of which window has focus. So let's look in the action list. And I'm going to go to one where I've already set this up. So uh, you can see here this for spacebar, I have it on global. I'm just going to double click on this. And there's this new scope function. Um, normal means that um, when the main window, when Reaper's main window has focus, this action will be available, um, which means that you can have a different action um, when the MIDI Explorer or the MIDI Editor is active. When it's set to global, the spacebar will do this action regardless of which which window has focus, which means that in, in this case where spacebar is play and stop, um, that's going to override any plugins that are in front of Reaper's main window. You've probably seen that a lot where you hit the spacebar and it just goes donk instead of uh, stopping or starting playback. This is one solution for that. Uh, there's also global and text fields, which means that um, with the, in the case of this, if you press the space bar while you're typing something, it would start playback and ignore inputting a space bar. In this case, that's not one that you would want to do, but there are uh, some others that you might want to do that with. I think this is probably more appropriate for the, uh, the F keys or something like that. OK, so I have space bar on global, and so uh, when I have the action list in focus, spacebar does that. If I have the media explorer in focus, spacebar does not um, affect the media explorer, which is actually a bit of a downside. Um, you do need to have different actions for the media explorer for play and stop. Um, you know, just be careful about how you do that. Another thing in the action list, you can search by key bindings. So what this means is that you can filter this list. You can organize this uh, shortcut column by, let's say, the command key. You just type in CMD, and then all the actions that have the command key assigned to them can be listed here. Same for control, CTRL, and all of those are there. Uh, Alt, actually, it'd be Option on the Mac. Um, like that, do shift plus, you should be able to see all the ones there with shift, unless it's also in the name. So that's pretty helpful. When you're bouncing to disk, that's in the file menu, and you go to uh, save live output to disk bounce, you can now put in um, wildcard into the file name. And as usual, there's um, the wildcards list. This list of wildcards available is going to be a lot shorter than, let's say, the, the render window. Uh, that's just because um, this doesn't get information about items or tracks or region names. Um, so you can add in project, tempo, time signature, um, and any other name that you want to add in there. So this project is called bleep bloop bloop. And so with the uh, dollar sign project wildcard, it will export a a file called bleep bloop bloop dot wave. Um, and if I do space hyphen space uh, live, that adds it to the file name. In the last update, they kind of accidentally removed 32-bit VST bridging on uh, Mac OS Mojave. This update puts that back in, but at some point this will be going away. So just Try to get rid of your 32-bit VSTs. 32-bit is just not going to be allowed um, going forward on the Mac system. Um, and for now, you can re-enable the 32-bit audio unit scanning by putting in a certain uh, line into reaper.ini. That's all in the change log. All right, so a couple changes in the MIDI editor. Um, there's actually a lot more, but I'm only going to show you a couple here. We can now move the edit cursor by clicking into the CC lanes, right? Used to not be the case. 
So uh, so now we can yeah just click anywhere into the CC lanes and we can move it. We can also now copy and paste CC events from one lane to another. So I'll just quickly draw in something here. I can uh, right drag over that to cop uh, to select it. Command C on on Mac to copy. I uh, put my cursor where I want to put it. You, uh, click into the the CC lane that I want to paste into, and then press Command V, and that pastes it in. And do just these two. Command C, go here, Command V. And remember, it, it's going to go to wherever your cursor is. So there we go. When it comes to recording, they've done some changes to MIDI CC pitch and aftertouch behavior in touch replace and latch replace modes. Um, I'm not really going to demo that, but I will show you the new preference for that. So if we go to preferences and media and MIDI, there's this new option, MIDI CC touch replace recording timeout. The help tip here says timeout touch replace recording when CC slash pitch message hasn't been sent in this many milliseconds. So by default, it's one second. So um, when you're overdubbing MIDI and you are, uh, when you're using aftertouch, it, instead of it continuing forever, it's going to time out after however many seconds. And it will just revert back to the previous value that's in that file already. And that's pretty cool. So if you have a performance uh, that's using, let's say, Mod Wheel and any other CC events, aftertouch, um, when you're punching in on that same item, you can um, move those controllers again, kind of overdub CCs really easily into that, and it will automatically stop recording that when you're not touching it. Uh, so with this parameter here, if you set this to 10 milliseconds, it would stop inputting your uh, aftertouch, mod wheel, whatever it is, and go back to what's already written there into the item after 10 milliseconds. So pretty cool. Also in recording, we have an action to set and reset the recording pass counter to any number. That means that we can now set up a recording to be the first recording on the on the track gets a name like um, recording 01. And, and it's much easier to manage the take numbers that way instead of have the file name of the first recording be just the track name, and then the next recording being uh, dash one, we can now force it to be the first one is dash one, the second one is dash two, and it's just a little more uh, consistent and easier to navigate through in the uh, recordings folder. So let's just demonstrate that. Um, I'll just record whatever on this track, um, and we'll see the take names. A couple things I need to show you first, though, in the action list, we go to uh, recording pass, and so we've got uh, we've got reset global recording pass counter, and we have set global recording pass counter. So I'm going to run this in this project. I haven't set this before, so I'm going to start the numbering at one. So first recording will get the number one. Also going to set my file names in preferences audio recording and so i've got this set to track dash rec pass and then three numbers just three digits padding the wildcards with numbers something i'll show in the next part but anyways so i have a uh, track name dash rec pass and it's going to start at whatever number we chose in that action and then it's going to use a three digit number all right so the first recording here Okay, so this file name is now sim001. And when we're not using that recording pass function, um, or if we didn't have recording pass added here to our track name, that would be a recording just called sim. So it wouldn't have that, that number there. And then the second recording would be sim-01, even though it's the second take. Let's do another recording here. This one is called, uh, the second one is called sim002. If we set our recording counter 
to 12. Record again. The third recording is SIM 012. So this is just going to keep track of the number of recordings that you do in the project. And if you manage it well, it's going to keep uh, your take numbers uh, in line with the, um, the recording times, the number of times you ever hit record in the project. Um, and if you want to reset all the numbers back to zero, there is this other action, reset global recording pass counter. All right, so now we're into rendering. And if we go to the render window, we have a wildcard for timeline order underscore track. We've got these items selected. I'm going to the selected media items. I can use the wildcard timeline order track. Let's get the item name underscore and timeline order track. So it's going to render six files. And the first one is going to be uh, the name of the item plus an underscore 01. So uh, this uh, sixth item will be underscore 06. Things are a little bit different when you have items on multiple tracks selected, right? So I have eight items selected, everything on this track and everything on this track. And so the, these two items will be, the, the number count will start over. If you're not using the timeline order, if you're using instead the item number, basically this would be number six, this would be number seven, and this would be number eight, even though the items themselves have different names. You know, that's helpful for some things, but timeline order track is going to be the one we would want to use if we want to keep the same item numbering, you know, left to right per track. When we're rendering items, we can now render through the master track. So if there's any effects on the master track, we can still use all the item wildcards, like getting the item name and the numbers, but any effects will be applied to the exported items. We no longer have to make a region for each item um, or do batch processing where we have, we have to solo each track and render out items based on their time selection or, or region uh, just to get the effects processing. Um, so that's pretty cool. And to do that, you just change that in the source area of the render window. Certain wildcards can be used with file name padding. So let's go to timeline order, and then we can put in 000, and let's just make sure that we've got the right type of selected items here. We've got these. Let's do item name, underscore, and then a number. So I've got, I've padded this number by adding in three digits. I think we can also do square brackets there. And so if we do this, it's going to start the numbering system at, at 001. If we do this, it will be, uh, it, it will default to a two digit number. We do this, it will start at 10 and go up. So uh, lots of options there. Um, if you go to the wildcards and wildcard help, it will show um, any of the ones that you can use the padding for the ones that have N here, this one. So timeline order track, file number, um, and timeline order. Those ones can use the timeline or the number padding option basically adding in zeros or any other number to offset that file numbering system. And one more very small thing here, when we've got this on master mix or on stems, um, there are these new options here for the dither options. So we can choose to dither and uh, noise shape stems. Here's master mix and stems, um, but not dither the master, that sort of thing, or vice versa. Choice is up to you. Um, in general, you probably want to dither um, unless you're doing that on, um, you know, unless you have a master limiter that has dither built in, uh, the stems will not get that dither. And so, um, yeah, you can dither the stems, but not dither the master or noise shape if you want. We can now set a tempo envelope display range, which basically just restricts the visual area for uh, drawing in tempo envelopes. 
um, to whatever minimum and maximum values we want. There is per project and global settings. So let's first look at the global setting in Reaper preferences, editing behavior envelope display page. And so the default tempo map envelope display range is 80 to 160. So let's just put this to um, something like four to 300, hit apply. And so we can draw in an envelope. Oh, and by the way, in the view menu, you go to the tempo envelope, you can show this line here. So we can click here, we can drag something, and goes all the way down to four BPM, all the way up to 300 BPM, right? So a huge range of values that we can put in here. This range is not really useful, um, but let's put in, yeah, let's just put in a couple changes here. It's gonna drop down to 13 and go up to 287. We can right click here, go to envelope defaults, tempo envelope range, and we can set the minimum to something more reasonable like 60, and we can set the maximum to something like 180. Um, a project is most likely to gonna be in that range. And so the envelope doesn't need the full maximum, minimum maximum. And it's gonna give us some information here. The actual BPM tempo is from 13 to 288 BPM. The default range will be from four to 300, but we're going to restrict this view to 60 and 180. And so this is still the same values, but when we're adding in new points here, and do this at the end. The, the minimum value that we can put in here is now 60, the maximum is 180. And that's just from dragging. We can still um, double click here, put in a value outside of that display range manually. I think that's pretty straightforward. So if you wanna do it per project, it's in this, uh, in this right click menu, envelope defaults, tempo envelope range. It's also in the action list. If we type in envelope range, set display range, you can also set it to current project minimum maximum BPM. And so now our envelope range is whatever the maximum or in minimum values that were in the project. So that's all I wanted to show you for this video. There's so much cool stuff in this update. There's a lot more in the change log, lots of little bug fixes and things. Uh, things that I can't really show you, um, but check out the change log in the help menu. Um, and thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.